Hello and welcome to Virtual Convict. Today we'll be looking at doing a tutorial on how to make a basic top-down 2D endless shooter. Throughout the tutorial series, we'll be looking at character movement, shooting, spawning waves of enemies, and having a shot. Before we begin, download the project assets from the link in the description. This will take you to a GitHub project. This contains the artwork and sound used in the tutorial. I will later be uploading the work we cover in each video in the tutorial on GitHub as well. So if you come across any problems while coding, uh, my work will be available online. Now let's move on to making the game. First, we want to create a new Unity project. Select 2D. Uh, with selecting 2D, Unity will make some changes to our project to accommodate a 2D environment. For instance, it will change our camera to orthographic and make the camera background a solid color from a skybox. What we're going to do now is add our assets such as art and sound to the project by opening the raw file that you downloaded from the GitHub project and dropping it into the projects tab. Next, let's set up our project. So we'll need a folder called scripts. This is where we're going to put all of our programming code into. Uh, in the bottom left corner of your Unity window, there should be a Projects tab. And then under that, there should be an Assets folder. I want you to right click on that, go to Create, Folder, click that, and then name the folder Scripts. Next, we want to create another folder called Prefabs. For those that don't know, a prefab is basically a template of game objects we create, and it allows us to replicate these objects without the game object being in the scene. Lastly, we'll need an animations folder. This will be used for our player and enemy animations, such as walking or shooting and dying. Now that we've got our folders sorted, let's create our ground. So go to the projects tab, Go to your art assets and click defense. Make sure that the defense's texture type is sprite 2D and UI. If not, please select it and apply. Next, right click on your hierarchy. Go to 2D object, sprite. With this, we create a sprite renderer into our scene. And then what we do is we drag defense into the sprite of the sprite renderer. With this, we get our ground. To make it easier for ourselves, we want to rename our ground into ground. So go to your hierarchy, click on new sprite, press F2, which is the shortcut to rename stuff, and rename the new sprite to ground. We then want to make our player and have him move around on this piece of ground that we've made. So go to the hierarchy, right click, create empty. This will create an empty game object. We want to rename that to player. So we'll do that now. After that, we want to right click again on the hierarchy and create a 2D object sprite. We want to name that one top. Now with top selected, I want you to press Ctrl D to create a duplicate. Press F2 to rename and rename that to bot. Next, I want you to drag bot into top and drag top into player. So what this does is that it will represent the player as the game object with an upper torso as its child and then with the upper torso having a child of bottom torso. Now it's time to do some coding. So let's create a player script. So right click on the scripts folder that you created in your project, go to create and C sharp script. We're going to name that the player. Press enter and enter again to open up your IDE. My one is Microsoft Visual Studios. So in this script called player, we want to try and keep anything that's unique to the player in this script. So just above um, void start, we want to enter in a variable called public float run speed. This will define how fast the player can run. After run speed, we want to create a public animator top torso, a public animator bot torso. 
Next, we type private float horizontal and private float vertical. This will be used to record the horizontal and vertical movement of our plater. Next, private rigid body 2D body. Once we finish this script, we'll be adding a rigid body to the player game object. And with this, it lets us reference our physics based movement on our game object. Next, we need private bull is moving equals false. In start, we need to get reference to our rigid body on the player game object. So we're going to type body equals get component rigid body 2D and we'll use this later on. In our update function, we want to create the ability to move our player using the WASD keys, rotate the player's body towards wherever the mouse is aiming, and we also want to rotate the player's feet towards where the player is moving. So to do this, just below update, we're going to create three functions, move player, rotate body and rotate feet. In move player, we're going to write horizontal equals input dot get axi raw brackets quotation marks horizontal and then vertical equals input dot get axi in brackets and quotation marks again, vertical. On the horizontal and vertical axes, they are inbuilt into the inputs of Unity by standard, and they are controlled using the WASD keys. So when you want to go left or right, it's A and D, and you'll get a negative value on vertical when you press A, and a positive value on D. So this basically can show us if we're going left or right and it's the same with up and down and W and S. So W is positive and S is negative. Next, if horizontal is not equal to zero or vertical is not equal to zero, then we are moving. So is moving is equal to true. Else is moving equal to false. So basically, when horizontal or vertical has any input, so if you press W, A, S, or D, the player should move, and thus vertical and horizontal is most likely not going to equal zero. So what this does is, it tells us if the player is moving or not. So in the next function we have, it rotate body, we have a variable vector three difference, another one called float distance uh, equals a vector three distance, uh, game object dot transform dot position, comma, camera dot main dot screen to world point and in brackets input dot mouse position. So what this uh, float distance variable does is basically it calculates the distance between the current game object it's on, which is the player, uh, to your mouse position on the screen. What we're going to try and do in this rotate body function is we are going to try and find the angle of which how far the player has to rotate to look at where your mouse is aiming. So next, we're going to calculate the difference between where your mouse is pointing and where the character is. So we do distance equals camera dot main dot screen to world point in brackets input dot mouse position uh, and the brackets minus transform dot position. Next is difference dot normalize. So what this does is it means that the entire sum of the vector three uh, will be equal to one. So X plus Y plus Z has to equal one no matter what. We then create a variable float 
rotation z equals math f dot a tan two in brackets we want to type difference dot y comma difference dot x end of brackets times math f dot rad to deg which is radians to degrees this will find the angle and then convert it into degrees so we can use it in an Euler quaternion if I can say that right uh, for our transform so next is top torso dot transform dot rotation equals qu quaternion sorry uh, dot Euler brackets zero comma zero comma rotation Z in our last function that we have rotate feet we want to do if is moving then vector 2 V equals body dot velocity then float angle equal math F dot a tan 2 in brackets V dot Y comma V dot X end of brackets times math F dot rad to degrees then on the next line it's bot torso dot transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot angle axis in brackets angle comma vector 3 dot forward next line is if bot torso dot transform dot local Euler angles dot Z is greater than 90 and the bot torso dot transform dot local Euler angles dot Z is smaller than 270 then we want to have bot torso dot transform dot local scale equals new vector 3 minus 1 comma minus 1 comma minus 1 else bot torso dot transform dot local scale equals new vector in brackets 1 comma 1 comma 1 so what this does is basically if the player is moving backwards from where they are facing your character's legs will flip so then your feet aren't facing the back of your head. It makes your movement look a bit more natural. That should be all. Now we go back into the update uh, and now we type move player, rotate body, and rotate feet. Now in a private void fixed update function we are going to type body dot add force in brackets new vector two in brackets again horizontal times run speed comma vertical times run speed end of brackets and that should be all so in this function we type out anything in regards to physics inside here as fixed update is not frame dependent. So this should be all and our character should be moving so now we go back into our unity project we drag the scripts player onto our player uh, game object in the hierarchy we want to go to the top game object add component and search for an animator add that and do the same for the bot we also want to add an animator to that uh, game object as well once that's done go to the components of your player and drag and drop the top to top torso and bot to bot torso add a rigid body component uh, rigid body 2d and we should be able to move now Next we want to add some visuals to our player so we need to go to the top sprite renderer go to your projects tab 
go to player, handgun, idle, and then drag and drop handgun zero, so the first image, onto the sprite renderer. After that, go to bot, and do the same thing with feet. So, you want to go to feet, idle, and then drop and drag idle onto the sprite renderer of your bot game object. Next we want to customize our player's run speed and rigid body. So our player's run speed will be 60 and on our rigid body our mass will be 1, linear drag will be 10, angular drag will be 0 0.05. We then want to go to edit, go to project settings, physics 2D, go to gravity and on our Y, we want to make that zero, so we don't have gravity affecting our player. Now that we got a player that can rotate and run about, this will be the end for this video. I hope to see you all in the next video for this tutorial series. If you have any suggestions or comments about the series, please let me know down below, as this is my first time doing a tutorial. And I'll see you all in the next video. Good night.